going on guys? I'm going to first and foremost apologize because today's video is not going to be the typical vlog. It's going to be a little bit different. It's going to be more of a story time and kind of just giving you guys an update on how my first day in Miami went, which was a complete and total disaster. It's currently nighttime right now. I'm finally all settled in, but there was a lot that went down. I was scared. I just felt uncomfortable all day today and I wanted to backtrack and start you guys from the very beginning and just kind of explain to you why I wasn't able to film and also just what actually happened. Let's backtrack to yesterday. So in Vegas when we were packing up, Alex and I got these like feelings inside and this happens time to time where we get like maybe anxiety or like we feel pressure in our chest and it's like a foreshadowing of what's to come, something that may not be good. Now the Airbnb that we were staying at, the person that was running it, he sent me a message and he was just asking what time will you be arriving? Now, I personally didn't think anything of it, I just thought it was a simple question. Alex already had kind of like a red flag and he was like, well that's weird, why would he be asking that when check-ins at 3 o'clock regardless? So I had answered him saying that we were arriving at super early in the morning, um, but it's okay, we don't have to check in until later that time. So he wrote back and he was like, oh, okay, maybe I'll try getting the place ready for you guys ahead of time. So I was like, oh, that's awesome, great. Now we flew out and when we were on our flight to actually head to Miami, there was an issue with the plane, so we were actually on it for an additional hour and they thought we were all going to have to get up and leave because we actually started taking off. Then we landed and there was something wrong with the plane and I was like, oh my god, this is not good, this is scary. So long story short, they fixed whatever the issue was. And we flew off and we landed about an hour delayed, but we got into Miami this morning at 8 a.m. So we rented a car, we picked that up. Time is rolling around and now we have to kind of just make do until 3 o'clock because that was the check-in time. All the previous Airbnbs that I've had, they send you a manual giving you a list of check-in directions, like detailed manuals of PDF files, giving you all the information you can imagine. And this Airbnb, I didn't receive anything yet, and it's 2 o'clock and check-ins at 3, so I'm like, this is odd, you know, let me, let me send a message. I should have known this ahead of time, but I didn't think of it. The gentleman who was running the Airbnb, he sent a message and he was like, oh, you know, here's my cell phone number, text me anytime if you need anything. Now that should have been a red flag in my head, and now looking back, I see that now, that he wanted to talk off of the site, and that you should always talk, always have your conversations on the website, because that is proof that's documentation on your conversation and what goes down. So I shoot him a message and I'm like, where is the manual? I was just looking for it. Maybe I didn't receive it yet. I had questions on how the check-in process was going to work and how parking, because on the site it said free parking on premise. So I was like, you know, let me just know if do I need a parking pass? Where do I park? All those details. And he just simply says, oh, I'll be up front and I'll take care of everything, bring you in. And then there's valet parking, which has nothing to do with my building. So I'm thinking, okay, that's weird. On this site it says free parking premise which is the main reason I chose this place so then I wrote back to him and I said well on the site it states free parking on premise and he was like oh no that's not the case so I'm basically saying so you lie that's not the case then why do you have it on the site and so he was like oh yeah um, maybe if anything your rental car I could put my name on your contract and then you can maybe get it for free I was like it says free parking I don't want to pay for parking why is this the case and he had nothing to say. The valet parking was gonna cost roughly like $40 a day, but that's to keep it in for 24 hours. That means you're not allowed to take it in or out, and we need our car. So every time you take it out, you have to pay an additional amount of money. So in total, we were gonna be spending over $200 additionally on top of the Airbnb. So we arrived there, we pull up, and I'm not even sure who he is because on his picture, on his avatar on Airbnb, was not a picture of his face. So now I'm looking around, and I already feel uneasy because now I'm thinking to myself, why did I even book? Because I don't even know all this information about the person. Long story short, I kind of put two and two together and I figured out it was him. So I go up to him and I don't even know really his first name because once again his name on his Airbnb was not like a real name. And so I was reading so I was reading through some reviews and I kind of pinpointed what his name might be. So I approached him and I said his name and he kind of mumbled, he didn't really even acknowledge if that was his name or not. So I was like, okay. Now the valet parking, they asked me to provide them with the room number that I would be staying. First question I asked the man was what room are we staying in just so I could provide it to the valet because they were going to be taking our car away because at that point I was like we have no place to park I'm just going to do valet he couldn't answer and I thought that was weird like you obviously know what room we're staying in I was like can you please provide it and he's getting nervous he's looking around and like can you please tell me what the room number is couldn't answer it. So I'm like, this is weird. The gentleman speaks Spanish, so he says something to the valet person in Spanish, and so now I have no idea what's being said, and then they take our car. So that was that. All of our luggage now gets taken, and we are bringing it upstairs. He seems super nervous. When we're approaching the door to go in, 
he goes to open it as if it's already unlocked, which I thought was weird. Usually you would lock your, your room, but okay. And he seemed frustrated, like as if someone locked it on him. So he unlocks it, we go in. Now the first thing that comes to my mind is this is not the Airbnb that I booked. He's like, so you're going to be staying in here tonight and tomorrow you're going to be moving up two floors and that's the room you originally booked. So this is not the room you booked and you're going to have to move. So I'm like, that's such an inconvenience. We're going to unpack everything and mind you, Alex and I have a ton of luggage, like six plus bags. And he's like, yeah, 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 it's fine. It's actually better. This is a better room and everything will be good. You just go up tomorrow at 11 o'clock. That's the time I'm going to take you up. So I'm not even asking if 11 o'clock works for us. His reason for us not being able to go into our original room is that it wasn't ready in time, that there was extreme damage from the previous guest and we weren't able to go in. So that again put another flag in my head like, okay, what kind of damage would have gone on that we can't even come into our room until the following day when you knew we were coming in? I was going back and forth with him explaining that that's not fair, that we have to switch rooms and that this wasn't the original room. And so he really doesn't say anything. He gives us two keys to the room. But the weird part was that he went and takes one key back for himself to keep off as if like he wanted access to the room at any given time. Now mind you, during this whole time, I had such anxiety, I had such pressure in my chest, I was shaking, like I felt nervous. As he's talking to us, he's shaking, he's sweating, he doesn't seem like calm at all, he really can't give us straight answers. The way he was walking in the place, it was like as if he didn't own it, like he seemed kind of confused by it, which was something else that I was like, this is weird. In the apartment, there was a washing machine already going going on. Towels were wet. The shower was still like there was all water in it as if someone was just in it. Now he leaves. At that point I just wanted nothing. I just wanted him to be gone and needed a minute to just kind of breathe. The way he left it off was it doesn't matter if you're not here tomorrow morning. I'll come in and I'm going to move all your stuff up at your convenience. And at that point I'm thinking I don't trust you and I don't want you taking all of my belongings, all my valuables up without me even being there. So I go on Airbnb right away to see if I can cancel, get my refund back. And the first thing I see is no refund, except if you cancel it seven days prior. At that point, it really didn't even matter because I did not feel safe. It's like when you know something's wrong and something's like just not, it isn't how it should be. It doesn't matter if you're going to lose some money or what. Your safety is the most important thing always. If you have an instinct telling you something is wrong, listen to it completely. Just remove yourself from the situation. So Alex and I quickly charged everything because at that point, cameras were dead. We had nothing. Everything was dead because we were traveling around in the car all day and we had no access to outlets. So we're sitting in the apartment and there's no blinds. Now there's floor to ceiling windows. And like you know that feeling when you just feel like you're being watched? That is what Alex and I both did. Like I didn't say it at first and then I looked at Alex and I started saying it and he was like, oh my God, I was gonna say the same thing. So across from the building that we were staying at, there's all tall high rises with other apartments. And I don't know what it was, but something inside of me was saying like, you're being watched. I couldn't explain it. I don't even know how to explain it, but that sense, that feeling like, Someone's watching you and I just felt so there was no even blinds to pull it down and I just felt like someone across the way was just watching in on us and that was another thing that I was like okay I need to get out of here. So we felt completely unsafe and we had nowhere to go but all we knew was that we just wanted to get out of there, get our car and then we would figure out the rest. We take all of our stuff out, we go right downstairs, we get that car and as soon as, this was another thing that was weird, as soon as we left that building he sends us all these text messages. It's as if like he knew we left. He sends all these other things apologizing for everything saying if you want like I can invite you to this pool party for July 4th and all these messages and I was like that's weird it's like literally as soon as we left so we leave we get out of there we're out of that vicinity and I felt so much better but now at this point we have no place to go between Alex and I were on our phones we're looking for a place and then I come across the one that we're in right now which was super duper cheap and we finally checked into this room guys it's 10 30 at night I'm like this is exhausted we had breakfast and that was it. When we came in, we stopped at this place called Big Pinks, and that's all we had today because we never had the opportunity to get food. And so I'm hungry, I'm tired, my eyes hurt, I have a headache. Today literally has just been one of those days where you like you can't even make it up, and it's hard to even explain like how I felt. But like today just was like, uh, it's like you know when you say you wake up and you never know what's gonna happen. This was definitely one of those days, and like my anxiety was through the roof. I just it felt so uncomfortable. I felt vulnerable. 
but my biggest thing is that I don't want this day ruining the rest of this trip so I'm excited to go to sleep tonight wake up tomorrow scratch this I just want to put this in the past but I wanted to share with you guys so you understood what happened and why there was not a vlog if there's anything to take away from it it's that always listen to your gut always listen to the instinct that you feel inside if you feel any ease if you don't feel safe if you feel something is gonna happen or just something is wrong don't doubt yourself because you don't realize sometimes you get these feelings and you're like oh let me shrug it off but odds are you're feeling those feelings for a reason I'm gonna go to sleep I can't wait to see you guys tomorrow for the July 4th festivities thank you so much for watching and once again I'm sorry that there wasn't a vlog today I hope you guys understand I'll see you tomorrow